and welcome to this session on airway clearance and exercise. My name's Barbara Crossley and I'm a patient from the UK and I firmly believe that airway clearance and exercise are two of the most important things we as patients can do for ourselves to keep as healthy and stable as possible. We're going to start with two polls to find out your experience of airway clearance. Then we'll go on to a video of some of our routines as patients, followed by a series of videos on the various airway clearance techniques. And then we'll have a panel discussion between patients and physiotherapists. And finally, a session answering your questions. So Claire, could we have the first of the two polls now, please? Which is, have you ever been taught airway clearance? Oh, well, that's that's interesting. 72% of us here today have been taught some measure of airway clearance. 22% haven't, which haven't, and 5% don't know. So, yeah, um, that could be worrying. <laughs> um, could we do the second poll now, please? Which is, how often do you do airway clearance if you do it? Oh, well, that's, that's a good score for people who do it daily. I suspect it's because we have to rather than we want to. <laughs> but um, only when I get an infection, that's, that's quite significant too. Um, and 10% of people do it only when they have time or 10% never do it, which is quite worrying unless they have the dry version of bronchiectasis, which some people do. So thank you for that. That's enlightening. So um, do put your questions in the Q&A box. If we can't answer them live at the end, we'll endeavor to give written replies. And any general comments should go in the chat. So now I'd like to introduce uh, two of my colleagues on the ELF patient advisory group. They are Donna Heilweil, who lives in Switzerland, Hello, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> and Eliza Compaziari from Greece. Hello. Nice to be here. <laughs> the physiotherapists joining us are all at the forefront of their field, and they take a special interest in bronchiectasis. They are Dr. Beatrice Herrero Cortina from Spain. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Danielle Hurwitz from Israel. Good morning, everybody and Dr. Arietta Spinou from the UK. Hi everyone, great to be with you today. So we decided to focus on airway clearance in response to audience feedback from the patient's conference last year. This showed a clear demand to learn more about the different techniques and how we fit them into our lifestyle. We know that the availability of airway clearance training is patchy across Europe. Those of us who do learn a technique may not know its name, 
And many of us are not aware that there could be other techniques and devices we could try. In addition, exercise to keep fit and active is important not only for general health, but for getting maximum benefit out of airway clearance. So it's best if you can incorporate both regular exercise and airway clearance into your routine, although that may be difficult, we know. In this first video, Donna, Eliza and I explain our routines. It covers what we try to do in terms of exercise and airway clearance and the benefits we get from it. So Claire, could we have the patient's video, please? Thank you. Well, I was diagnosed in, in childhood. I don't really remember it, to be honest. <laughs> and the first physiotherapy I was taught was, uh, was in my teens, um, after my lobectomy. I had a lobe of my lung removed at the age of 13. In my teens, it was all postural drainage, doing your uh, deep breathing on a slope. And indeed, um, in my childhood, I had to have my bed on a slope. It was the foot of the bed was up on bricks to aid the drainage of, of the uh, of the mucus. But I stopped doing that when I went to university. It sort of cramps your style. <laughs> so I was diagnosed in 2011 and uh, I started uh, the, the first time that I learned that uh, there is such a thing as a physiotherapy for for lung conditions was in 2020 21 21 and then when i asked my doctors and um, i think they didn't really know much about it but they my doctor uh, sent me to a physiotherapist and uh, she gave me some guidelines as to how i can uh, perform these exercises I was diagnosed uh, when I was about 20, so that was about 40 plus years ago, and that was in America. Um, and at that time, similar to what Barbara has just said, there were not a lot of, um, there was not a lot of emphasis placed on what you can do for a daily routine. It wasn't until I came to Europe in about 10 years ago and started seeing local doctors with more modern techniques um, that I was given instruction on how to do other sorts of breathing techniques. I met with a respiratory therapist for quite some time who devised exercises specific to my areas that need attention and also was uh, very strong in recommending that I do a wide variety of activities and therapies and medications on a regular basis to prevent the exacerbations rather than just responding to when an exacerbation comes about. Usually I perform these exercises uh, before lunch and so it's maybe one o'clock or two o'clock uh, afternoon and, and then but this is what i try to do i have to admit i don't do it every day uh, sometimes um, i might i might be too tired to even start them so i try to do some exercises uh, in the past i had uh, dance lessons which i adored uh, but um, really exercising and i some at some point i understood that i had to do something well my daily routine is is to do my exercises straight away as soon as i get up because i know if i will leave it to later in the day i won't do it <laughs> other things crowd in and i can't be bothered 
and I'm too tired. So I have to do it absolutely first thing before I shower, before I get dressed, before anything. And I do an hour's exercise um, with usually with dumbbells and with a yoga mat, um, just just uh, toning up various muscles and um, exercises that expand your lungs um, and exercises that that uh, help your posture because with bronchiectasis you do have a tendency to hunch your shoulders and stoop and also I, I need to be fit to be able to do my airway clearance exercises which is, is quite physical I also need to do my whole routine first thing in the morning or I find ways to not get to it. It's not fun, um, but I find that when days that I do do my routine, which is most days, I survive uh, with higher energy levels throughout the day, much better than on days that I skip my routines. So I try to run uh, every day, if not run, and I'll do some Nordic walking outside if the weather is cooperating. I have a vibration plate. I call it the jiggle machine. It's really good for sh actually physically shaking the mucus off of the lung walls, which helps encourage excretions. And uh, it's fun. <laughs> so. There are some very good uh, YouTube videos uh, specifically for lung exercises um, by physiotherapists, but you would get a full range of exercises that would uh, that could be tailored to suit you if you did a course of pulmonary rehabilitation, which is generally arranged through your physiotherapist. It's also difficult, I think. It's it's, it's extra difficult. A little it's bit difficult extra. to fit in if if you if you're working. It really is. If you're working full time, it's very hard to fit in both the exercise and the airway clearance exercises, which are which are separate. So many things you need to learn. It's not only bronchiectasis. It's also having to do with how strict you can be or how do you find your limits and how do you prioritize them. It's really hard um, when you're starting out to get accustomed and okay with the idea that this is going to be part of your life forever and at the same time understand that there are some things you can do about it but the important thing i think is to try and be positive that with some effort something is going to shift in a good way for you and to just keep trying. Uh, if one thing doesn't work, then feel free to try something different. I, I believe different bodies are gonna respond differently, um, but the top thing that helps me that I would recommend people try is being very aggressive with cardiovascular exercise. Bronchiectasis is hugely impactful yeah, across the life, um, but by putting in a lot of effort to maintain moving the lungs on a regular basis and keeping the whole body uh, engaged regularly and fit, I think has made a big difference throughout my 40 plus years of dealing with bronchiectasis on how, um, how well I cough, how effective I am on um, clearing out mucus. I would prioritize airway clearance every time for people with bronchiectasis. You've just got to regard it as a part of normal body maintenance every single day, like brushing your teeth or, or having a shower. It, it's it's the most important thing we can do for the health of our lungs to keep us as free of, of mucus as possible and as free of infection as possible. Um, like Donna, I don't get many infections, in fact. Um, and I think that's because of the rigorous airway clearance that I do, as well as the other exercises. But really, airway clearance is the main thing. 
to take away? I would say also look after yourself in general and your uh, your mental health. Your, be kind with yourself. Try to do it. Do what you enjoy, Eliza. Do mm. dancing. If that's what you enjoy, dance it away. <laughs> I think all of us have said in, in different fashions that getting the mucus out and expanding the lungs regularly is critical to minimize the bacterial load that we all carry and the nice little pockets that we create for those bacteria to live in. It's part of the cycle of how to avoid um, having recurrences of really bad times and just do it however it works for you but try to do it. Thank you. So do put any questions you may have into the Q&A box which we'll answer later. Um, and now we have a series of videos made by the physiotherapists and their patients demonstrating different techniques. So I'll hand over to Danielle to introduce the first video and explain what technique we'll be seeing. Good afternoon. Now I think it is where, it is where I am. Um, we're going to see a video on autogenic drainage. Um, this is an area that I particularly enjoy. It helps move the secretions from the smaller airways to larger airways and clear them with less coughing. I feel so it's to try and minimize cough to try and clear those secretions. Um, with, a, with a patient who's never done it before and she's never done airway clearance before, so it's a very much first time. It shows that it's very clear and easy to do. So enjoy. Good morning, my name is Danielle, I'm a physiotherapist in Carmel Hospital in Haifa and this is my patient Leia. Today we are going to go through the breathing technique called autogenic drainage. The breathing has four stages. We begin with the preparation stage. We aim to drink a glass of water and make sure our throat is nice and moist. We then Blow our nose with a nice, long, slow clearing of the nose. From there, we begin with a nice deep breath in and a long, slow breath out, aiming to hear or feel where the crackles are within our lungs. Once we've done that, we begin our first stage. We take a small breath in and a small breath out. We aim to stay at these small lung volumes or lower lung volumes till we start to hear the secretions or feel the secretions collecting. Once we feel them collecting, we move to the middle lung volumes by taking a larger breath. Once again we feel our secretions collecting, we move to the larger lung volumes by taking a bigger breath in and a small breath out again. When we feel the secretions collecting at the top of our lungs, we aim to clear them with a half or two coughs. <coughs> if then we still feel we have secretions, we start the cycle again with a big deep breath in and a slow breath out all the way.
Africa. Thank you, Danielle. Um, and now Arietta, I think, will introduce us her video on the active cycle of breathing. Yes. So thank you, everyone. Um, you're going to see Janet, one of the patients with bronchiectasis, who has kindly produced a video on the active cycle of breathing techniques. This is a technique that is uh, in three parts, and she's going, going to explain her own routine. So this is just a demonstration of not what is the optimal, but uh, what she's using. Um, yes, can we see the video, please? My name is Janice, and I'm going to show you the active cycle of breathing, which I used. Normally, I do this lying down, but I'm doing it in the chair today. The most important part to start with is be relaxed, have relaxed breathing. Just take a few breaths like that and just feel relaxed. And then when you've got your breathing under control and relaxed and you feel relaxed, just take a deep breath in like that and then sigh out. And you usually do uh, one, two or three of those. And then you go back to the ordinary relaxed breathing. Slowly, slowly as you can. And when you've got it back under control, then you go into the huffing. By that time, it the um, mucus should be further up into the top of the lung. And the huffing is like you do onto a mirror to steam. It can steam the mirror up, so it's and that will bring it up further. If it doesn't work that time, just go back to the relaxed breathing and then just go through the whole cycle again. And then when you huff and it's ready to come up, the huff should bring it out and you should not need to cough. Now I'm going to show you the full cycle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you to Janet. Um, and there are there are surprisingly three more um, different techniques that we're going to show you today. Um, Beatrice will introduce her videos now to explain what they are. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Now it's time to see Marta video. I'm sure that Marta is also here with us. So hello, Marta. She was one of my first patients, and I always think that we change the roles because I learn a lot from her about hypercleanness techniques just to listen. And I taught I taught her how to do autogenic drainage and a slow expiration with Lotus open it in lateral posture, or a gold technique but we adapted both techniques to her needs. And now we are going to, to see how is the daily routine doing these both techniques. So can you please play the video? Claire?
Now the second video, it's, it's about how to use an oscillatory positive expiratory pressure. This time, Helen is our patient. She has bronchiectasis from childhood, and she's going to show us how to use an oscillatory positive expiratory pressure using the flutter, flutter device that is like a pipe with a cone, a ball, and a lip with holes in it. You can exhale from here, and now the ball is going to up down. So we can see the video just now. And the last video is from another patient, but in a different setting. She is a clinical case. She is a patient who had exacerbation and was admitted to my hospital. So I had the opportunity to teach her at the first time how to use an oscillatory positive expiratory pressure, combine it with autogenic drainage and a slow expiration with glottis open lateral posture. The subtitles are as summarized about how to do the procedure. But, but the audio, it's about the uh, easy instructions that I give to my patient. I would like to highlight that it was the first time that the patient started to doing this device, only to highlight that it's not difficult to learn how to do it. So please, the video when you can. It is a pleasure to present this patient, she is 61 years old, with a diagnosis of bronchiectasis and COPD, and waiting for a lung transplant. Her chronic symptoms are coughing, difficult to expectorate, fatigue, breathlessness, and wheezes in the chest. She completed a pulmonary rehabilitation program in my hospital, and she learned how to manage the speech-related symptoms using breathing exercise and coughing maneuvers. However, she is not adherent to this treatment because she doesn't feel that they help her enough to expectorate, so she prefer only doing exercise. Three weeks ago, she was admitted to my hospital and I took adventure to teach her and other types of fibro cleanse techniques. A soltar, Carmen. Le puedes dar un poquito más de velocidad, ¿vale? Te dejo coger más aire. Dale velocidad. Muy buena esta. Soltamos. Fantástico. Una más. Y descansamos. Muy bien. Perfecto, vamos. Muy bien. Coges. Fuera. Suelta, suelta, suelta. Despacito, 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 despacito. It is true that learning an airway clearance techniques during an exacerbation period is not ideal. However, sometimes it's the only option when you do, when you have difficulties to access to this treatment. It is true that she's not a master after a single session. However, she did well. And the most important thing, at least for me, she feels that this treatment works. 
She selected the technique after showing and explaining more than one option, and it is true that the advice was provided by the hospital. In the follow-up call, she told me that she's still adherent to this treatment. And I would like to highlight that it's important to take into account the order of treatment. First of all, bronchodilators, followed by nebulicid saline solution or mucolytics, urinary clearance techniques, and finally, inhaled antibiotics. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much to those patients for showing us what we should be doing in collaboration with the, with the physiotherapists. So now we're going to have a, a panel discussion on, on putting it into practice. I'd like to ask my fellow patients to start by raising any issues they'd like to have clarified. Eliza, would you like to go first with any questions or problems you've encountered as a relative newcomer to airway clearance? Thank you, Barbara. Yes, uh, thank you for all the patients that also uh, show, uh, show to us uh, their techniques. This is so he helpful, um, I'm sure, for everybody. Uh, so uh, the problems that I have uh, faced during airway uh, clearance exercises have to do actually with other health issues that sometimes are common in bronchiectasis such as uh, reflux and also sinusitis. So my question is, for example, uh, when uh, I do my airway clearance, sometimes I feel uh, ear pressure and I'm not sure if I have to stop then or if it's okay to continue because airway clearance helps me a lot to get rid of mucus. So it helps also with sinusitis, but sometimes I'm not sure if uh, this ear pressure and uh, could be dangerous or risky or anything. Also with uh, reflex, uh, so I saw also in the videos that other uh, people with prophylaxis uh, had, uh, for example, I think uh, it was Martha that said it has, uh, her trachea was irritated. And I'm not sure if it's the same, but uh, I do have a hoarse voice sometimes after uh, my airway clearance uh, exercises and uh, so my end uh, my aunt's advice is it was that maybe I should stop exercises uh, at that time because uh, it might have to do with reflex and uh, this could be a symptom of uh, reflex uh, so there are questions like this also I think uh, I think uh, the, in the questions uh, in the chat uh, there there was questions about uh, uh, when you cough blood and uh, so uh, this is this is also an important issue should we use devices at that point uh, should we avoid some certain exercises and questions like this and then. Uh, I don't want to, to say any further because I, I, want to, I don't think we would have time, but uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So which of the physiotherapists is going to go first? <laughs> I can go if, if you will. Okay. First of all, if you have acid reflux, uh, my advice is try to try to avoid sideline positions because if not, it's going to go up. Uh, so try to do your airway clearance techniques more in sitting position. Try to have at least one hour or two after your meals doing airway clearance techniques, or maybe before a certain meals to avoid that. And also try to, avo to avoid to push, you know, your stomach doing the air clearance techniques sometimes. It's true that we advise to use your hands to push the air, but in this case, you it's better if you try to, to avoid that. Maybe for the other questions, I'm going to, to give option to my, to my colleagues. Okay, yes, thank you, Beatrice. Um, with respect to the reflex, because you mentioned about the horse voice, uh, I agree with Beatrice's point about not using the gravity and trying to avoid uh, especially tipped position, so your head down. Um, and maybe think about the hygiene of your vocal cords or so, um, hydration and this kind of things more in general. Um, when it comes to sinusitis, 
I think in Daniela's video, it was nicely demonstrated that before you start your airway clearance, it's good to clear your nose because we know that the upper and the lower respiratory system is, is actually um, connected. So your nose is connected to your lungs. So it makes perfect sense that everything that happens up here affects your lungs as well. Um, so clear, clear your nose before you start your airway clearance, I would say. Um, and when it comes to the blockage of your uh, ears, I wouldn't be um, uh, particularly worried unless you, you experience some kind of uh, in, in, yeah, severe pain or something. If it's something uh, like a, a small discomfort, I would still continue there with clearance. And you mentioned lastly about hemoptysis, the presence of blood in your uh, sputum. This usually we see that in some patients, uh, particularly during exacerbations. So um, as long as this is not a, what we call severe hemoptysis, so not a lot of blood in your phlegm, you can still do these uh, airway clearance techniques that are gentle and don't involve uh, positive pressure. So we've seen the autogenic trainers, the active cycle of breathing techniques. These are things that you can still continue doing. Um, if you have more severe, severe hemoptysis, uh, it's better to talk with your doctor to your doctor and see what they advise because it's a it's a bit of a risk and benefit right so you still need to keep your uh, lungs clear but you don't want to make the uh, the hemoptysis um, to increase the hemoptysis so it's about finding a way that um, and what's the appropriate balance between those but in general we advise to continue for small hemoptysis continue the gentle airway clearance techniques and avoid positive pressure um, techniques for this period of hemoptysis. Beatrice, do you have something to add on this? No, it's really and only for the ear problems. It's also better not to use PIP device because you can increase the pressure as well. So try to avoid that. And you can try to exhale by your nose like Marta is doing. She, she has similar problems than you. So we adapted the techniques to her needs. So try to excel with your nose and maybe it's going to be better for, for you, Elisa. Thank you so much. I hope it helps uh, everyone uh, here. Can I add one thing? Um, one thing? One thing I would say is potentially try sinus rinses before to see whether that helps with the blocked sinuses. And also to try and make sure when you do your airway clearance, you're not coughing so much. So you're really trying to get your secretions as high as possible before you're coughing so you're not irritating your vocal cords so much. Yes, a very important point, Daniel, absolutely. So use lots of huffing instead of coughing, uh, which is much gentle, um, more gentle to your vocal cords. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's also great. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Um, Donna, are there any points that you'd like to highlight with the physiotherapist? Um, yes, first, thank you, everyone. The presentations were very educational, and um, <clears throat> I think it was very uh, brave of everyone participating to uh, show up and share what works for them with everybody. Um, one thing I'd like to say, just as a short statement, is when I do exercises that have been demonstrated, it's a very different experience than what we were shown. Um, I have an awful lot of mucus. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of huffing. There's a lot of excretion. So I just wanted to maybe help other people in the audience understand that everybody's experience may be different and it's okay. It doesn't indicate that there's a problem. It's just this is who you are and, and what you need to be doing. Um, my question to everybody is uh, surrounding mostly the importance of pretreatment. Nasal rinses were mentioned. Uh, I know people uh, use bronchodilators to open the airways before doing airway clearance. Um, there's also the matter of inhaling hypertonic saline or doing other treatments to liquefy the mucus before airway clearance. And I would love to hear what the therapists would say about how people should 
get themselves ready for the techniques. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Donna. That's an excellent point. And actually, when we were um, making the video with Janet for the airway clearance technique, she showed you, she did mention, oh, I forgot to say about that. And, and I do use my inhalers before the, the treatment and, and these things. So it is very important to prepare um, properly before you complete your airway clearance technique. Um, so as you said, if you're using bronchodilators, take your bronchodilators. If you're using, for example, uh, cell line nebulization, do that to, to, to hydrate your airways before you do your airway clear. So I think I think you mentioned, and, and sinuses as well. So I think you mentioned them, uh, you, you mentioned all of them and all of the preparation that people, if, if this is part of their treatment, should do before that. I don't know if you, Daniela and Beatrice have anything to add, but I think you've covered it from my side. The only thing I would add potentially is if you do exercise as well. So if you exercise before you do your airway clearance, that can sometimes also help move the secretions to make them easier to expect to it. Yeah, in fact, uh, the first thing to, to understand is if with airway clearance techniques, you are able to, to expectorate well, maybe it's okay. But if you are not able to expectorate, maybe you need a, a help. And you seeing hypertonic saline could be a good option for that. But they have to be together because the effect of hypertonic saline is, is short. So if you finish your treatment using saline solutions and you start your hour cleanse techniques or your exercise, for example, four or five hours after, you lost the potential effect of this, of this treatment. It is true that when you nebulize hypertonic saline, it's going to irritate you, so you are going to cough up a lot. But sometimes you cough not so much as P2 because it's only irritation. If you combine the hypertonic saline using each of the airway techniques that we saw, you are going to increase the effect of both of them. And it's, it's, it's good to know because sometimes I know that the daily routine is difficult, but you need to know that they have to be together. Yes, if I can take the opportunity, because Beatrice mentioned about coughing, and this is important, and I know people sometimes think that they cough their phlegm up, and that can be sufficient for clearing their chest. Cough is actually a protective mechanism of uh, a reflex of our lungs, which is great, but it is initiated in the in the higher parts of the of the airways, so the tubes that uh, connect uh, uh, our um, nose and mouth to the to the lungs. So we cannot clear the smaller airways if we only cough. We need to do airway clearance techniques, and we need to do huffing to move these secretions higher, so they can be expectorated through huffing or coughing. So for those who mentioned in the chat or in questions about cough itself only, uh, this is not, uh, that, that's the reason it's not adequate because it can be triggered only when the secretions are quite high enough already and in the largest airways. Yes, that's a good point. I, I always make a point when I do my deepest breath to hold it for five seconds to make sure that the tubes right at the bottom of our lungs uh, are really open to help the mucus make its way down. <clears throat> because I know the coughing is, it only gets rid of the, uh, of the mucus that's in your main airways, not the, not the small ones. Yes. And you can feel it coming up, the, uh, coming up into the trachea. You can feel the crackles getting uh, louder until you really want to cough. That's the principle of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, one question I'd like to ask is, is do the physiotherapists think that, that uh, regular airway clearance can combat fatigue and, um, and breathlessness? Because um, these are two common symptoms that people complain of with, with bronchiectasis. I think that for fatigue, a sort of breath, so breathlessness, 
exercise is the best option to reduce these both symptoms. So endurance exercise and strain your muscle is going to be an optimal uh, option to reduce these both symptoms. However, it is true that for some patients that have a large amount of sputum, doing exercise with a lot of filling mucus is going to be a challenge. So maybe in this case, you can do two or three maneuvers of your agro kinase techniques cough up and now maybe you are more ready to do this exercise. And maybe as Daniel uh, suggested, after that, you can start doing again some two or three maneuvers of fiber clearance techniques to finish your, your treatment. So it's it could be a good combination. However, for fatigue and breathlessness, the exercise, it, it could be a better option than only eyewear clearance techniques or at least it's my, my opinion. Thank you. Maybe we should go on to the, uh, to the audience's questions now. Um, I've noticed one or two questions from people with dry bronchiectasis, which is a concept I can't really believe <laughs> as, a, as a patient at the other end of the spectrum. But those with dry bronchiectasis, do they need to do airway clearance? Can I reply on this one? Because I have a particular interest um, in cough um, um, from my research. So um, first of all, I think there is, there is a, a small proportion of patients with bronchiectasis who present dry, uh, dry bronchiectasis. We haven't looked at this uh, very much because most of, of the patients we know, they, they are very productive. Um, however, I would say it's good to have uh, a knowledge about airway clearance technique uh, and what you can use when there is a chest infection where you produce phlegm. You don't need to practice this if you don't have, uh, daily if you don't have sputum to, to bring up, but you need to practice, practice the technique frequently enough so you don't lose your knowledge and, and your skills on the technique. So my advice would be for them to have a, a, an airway clearance technique that they know and they can use when they need to and practice that only to, to retain the knowledge rather than to clear the secretions because if they don't have secretions, yes, there's no point of, of doing that every day, but you need to be aware of uh, when you need to, to use the technique, uh, usually with a chest infection. Daniela and Beatrice, what do you think on that? I completely agree with you, Ariad. So maybe the next question, it's about a patient that asks, when I do hypertonic saline or any form of physio, autogenic drainage, aerobica, I only go a couple of breaths or minutes before I cough. Then once I started coughing, I can't stop, so I give up. Does anyone have any advice for me to follow up my session? Yes, I, I mean, we usually what we do with patients is we, we advise them to cough at the very last stages of airway clearance techniques because otherwise sometimes you can close the airways and, and clear on the higher part, as we mentioned earlier, of, of your airways. Um, the advice would be to speak to the physiotherapist uh, they are seeing and, and discuss about techniques of cough, cough control that they can use during the, the performance of airway clearance. So for example, zipping a bit of water or trying to, to use more of the nose breathing rather than mouth breathing, um, trying to swallow um, when they have the urge to cough. Because we know that cough is something that is controlled. Uh, it is a reflex, but it's also controlled from the highest centers. Uh, so we can still suppress it to some extent. So if she, if she or he can practice a bit of cough suppression so they can complete the cycle of their airway clearance and then half and cough towards the end of their airway clearance, that would be the optimal idea. Uh, another option could be to, to see if they can use another airway clearance technique that would help them to control their cough until they, they get to these final stages. 
And in fact, we don't know your concentration of hypertonic saline, but also there are options to, to include a hyaluronic acid that maybe it helps you to tolerate better the hypertonic saline solution. And also you can, you can try to ask your doctor if it could be better to reduce the concentration. If you have seven or, or six, maybe you can try 3%. But the most important thing is to tolerate well, because if not, you are going to cough, cough, and it's going to be a cycle that you can you can stop it. And, and when it comes to cough, also good uh, uh, vocal cord hygiene is very important. So avoid caffeine, uh, drink water, and those things would help you to, to control coughing. Um. Donna, there's a question about your um, vibration device, which looked a lot of fun. <laughs> Can you explain how effective that is on, on, uh, on shifting the mucus? Um, well, I can just say that for me, it, it actually makes the whole body vibrate. And um, I experience a lot of mucus coming up after I do that for maybe only five minutes. Um, it, you can adjust the intensity quite easily. And uh, if I'm very phlegmy, then I'll go at a lower intensity until I feel a little more clear. But if it's more of a dry day, then a higher intensity works. And I think it's just um, kind of the idea of being on a trampoline or um, even just running, the impact that is uh, between you and the ground, or in this case, the vibration plate, is what uh, loosens the mucus and makes it more easy to cough. I hope that addresses the issue. Do the physiotherapists think they are useful? And also, um, could we mention the, uh, the vibrating vests that some people use? Are they uh, a useful addition? I know they're very expensive, but a lot of people use them in, in America in particular, don't they? Yeah. Now I'm going to combine two questions in one, and maybe, Daniel, if you are happy with that, it's for, for you. The first one is how a patient can know if they, if he or he need a, a device, and also, what is the best duration for the treatment? For example, if we are using um, a capella, aerobica, flutter device, what is the best duration for, for these techniques? So um, to feel if you need a, an airway clearance device, I think it, it's really trial and error. So if you're struggling to clear secretions, but you have, it's always worth trying to add a device into your airway clearance session to see whether it helps. Everybody is very different. So some people find an airway clearance device helps. Some people find it irritates them. It's really a trial and error kind of thing. I don't really think there's a there's no right and wrong with it because we're all very different. I would say length of session is really, you want to keep going until you feel like you have very little or no secretions left to clear. So there's no point stopping your session if you still feel like you're full of secretions. So you should really continue a decent amount of time till you feel like you're really, you've got the secretions from those smaller airways and have been able to clear them and feel clear and your breathing feels much better. And, and then I think that's about the length of the session you want. And again, everybody's very different. Some people have a lot more secretions than others. It's really, there, there's no black and white, unfortunately. I think it, that's one of the reasons why it's really important to meet a physiotherapist if you can and get an individual plan sorted for you. And if it's not working, go back again and say, this is working for me, this isn't working. What can we do to try and change this a little bit? So that's really important there. Yes, absolutely. I have uh, the same opinion with the Nele, uh, that it's an individualized approach and, and you need to find something that works for each patient. So for people who have bronchiectasis, it's also about what do they feel that they're happy to do and uh, what they find more convenient and what fits in their daily routine. 
Um, so usually what we do in the UK is we have a stepwise approach. We start with uh, airway clearance techniques. And if we think that this is not uh, effective uh, and patients cannot clear the, uh, the, the phlegm from their lungs, then we go into devices and, and we do the same thing, trial and error and see what can work best. And when it comes to duration, absolutely keep, keep going until you feel you've cleared uh, your chest. Or I would say, uh, if, you can, if you never feel that you completely cleared your chest, keep going until you feel that you're quite tired and you, you cannot continue, or you've tried for too long and it's not possible to continue. So sometimes we see patients who never feel that their chest is completely clear. So I think there needs to be a bit of a, a reasonable adjustment there and see if they can do that again later in the day. And finally, I think this will have to be our last question, which is from Gillian. Um, it's about fitting in airway clearance and exercise during the day, especially when you have um, a full time job. She, she asks, how do you get into the right mindset to be able to um, work full time, commute if necessary? come home, make a meal, look after your family, and also fit in airway clearance and exercise. And I just think um, you've got to regard it as, as looking after yourself so that you can live your best life with, with the lungs that you've been given. Um, it's about avoiding infection and feeling better through getting rid of the mucus. Um, and just thinking about it as, as though you're a machine to be looked after <laughs> and it's essential to, to make the time to look after that machine um, as well as fit in the other. You've got to make it a priority to look after yourself and just explain to the other people in your life that you just do need this time um, in order to function happily as, as a human being, which is what we all want. <laughs> so um, thank you to everybody. Th thank you to my colleagues and to the physiotherapists and their patients and, and to everyone out there for joining us. Um, we'll try to give written answers to more of your questions. Um, but now we have a, a 10 minute break and uh, we'll restart at about 12.15 European time, 11.15 uh, in the UK and, and in Portugal. Uh, do come back because the next session is really important. It's on the latest bronchiectasis research. Thank you, everybody, and I'll see you later. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.